Hi there. Um, I have been thinking about different ways to apply conductive thread to uh, fabric using the sewing machine and rather than putting it in the bobbin. Just finding ways to use uh, all these fancy um, sewing machine feet that I have. There's got to be <laughs> there's got to be some ways. So um, I, uh, I I have this foot. It's a cording foot, and it has three three tunnels in it. So um, if you're sewing neo pixels, these aren't wide enough, and they're also too close. It's a little close for comfort and they would probably short. But if you're doing LEDs, these two outer ones, they're far enough apart so that they won't touch each other. And um, and they kind of match the legs of an LED. They're a, a bit further out so that if you do a little curly cues on the LEDs, um, it might work out nicely. And uh, so anyways, I haven't tried this yet, or I, I have tried it and I messed up. so. I thought I'd just do this on video and, and see what happens. So, turn my machine on. And, uh, all right, so I'll put the foot in. Let's see, is this focus? Let's see. All right. This machine has uh, one or two lights, and they're, they're kind of bright, and it, it makes a glare on the machine, and I, um, I can't cover them with my finger because it's really hot. And that means I can't cover it with tape because something might happen that I don't want to. So we'll just try to, I'll try to explain as much as what's going on. So I have this muslin and I did iron a stabilizer on the back because I'm going to be using a zigzag thread. And um, this, uh, you, want, you want some stability. So I'm going to feed this, uh, so this is the three ply conductive thread. So I'm feeding this through, and so there are um, corresponding grooves back here that line up with these these uh, these holes or tunnels. And theoretically, it's supposed to guide them through. Um, probably at the beginning, I'll want to hold it tightly. I haven't used this foot before yet for this. Certainly, I don't even think I've used it with this machine. And I've ordered some fiber optic strands and so I want to use this foot to um, to start making fiber optic fabric and I have to think about what kind of designs I want to do but it seems really hard to get no one everyone seems to be having a hard time stocking it so I'll just make my own and, and have fun with it okay so this not sure if it's in the channels I guess it doesn't matter at first I just want to try this out so, okay. that one's in the groove, and this one, try to separate that, whoops, I suppose if I were polite, I could fast forward, okay. So I think that's in. So I'm going to lower the f presser foot. And okay, so generally for this foot, you want to adjust your stitch. So I'm using the Singer Quantum Stylus. And it's a 12. Basically, it translates to a zigzag for stretch. So I'm going to increase the width as high as this machine will go, probably so it doesn't strike the, the foot, and that's letting me go up to a width of seven. And uh, the length of it is one, so I'll stick with that. So I'll bring that down. Also another theory that I think this might be useful for, for using in the future, uh, we'll first see if this works, is as I, as I stitch along a long piece of fabric, if I think I know where the LEDs are going to go, um, because it's just a long, a long string that you can actually move around, the zigzags probably won't pierce it. I doubt they will. Um, you could actually pull up a little bit so you can have some tails if you want to wrap around the LEDs a little bit. Um, but uh, that is sort of something to think about and experiment later. 
Alright, so I'm going to hold these taut. I think everything's set up and ready to go. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you want to hold it tight from behind and from the front because if they waver a little bit, then um, that needle goes pretty close to it and it will almost split it. And um, so those are kind of the noises I was hearing and I'm assuming that's, that's what happened. So, you know, you don't have to hold it in the exact parallel because that's, that's their job, but you do want to hold it tight. So, and what's fun about this is, um, I suppose you could do a curve, you know, you, you got to have your fabric marked up, but I'm just experimenting now to see if this is even viable or if this could be useful for someone for some type of specific project. All right. So that definitely helps holding, holding everything nice and tight. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that. And I guess I want to cut my threads. So it looks like railroad tracks. <laughs> Actually, it looks like a zipper. So if you wanted to incorporate that into your design, can you see that? No. Um, then that would be interesting, I suppose. Um, you always want to make things look like you meant it to look that way so people think you're kind of smart <laughs> so the um it's pretty good this is the beginning i didn't really control it but everything else is spaced really well because what happens is the needle goes in here in here in here in here so it actually lands down about four times so it does kind of brace all this in i could have put one through the middle channel and i would say um, it's still pretty safe that it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't short. So I guess I could try that. Um, but like I said, it's still too narrow for a NeoPixel. A NeoPixel is, um, almost twice this width. Like this is pretty good for, um, maybe the ground or earth and a data line, but the positive would be over here. So, and then what I was talking about before about maybe pulling up a little bit and I mean you, you totally have to plan this out before and make little marks of where you want your LEDs but so it just draws it just pulls this out and and then um, you could uh, figure that out if that if that helps with your your project or or deters from it or or maybe inspires you to um, do something better or different but uh, Anyways, so that's it. Thanks for watching.